22 laps. The Grand Prix of Qatar about to get underway. Carlos Checa, his third ever pole position ahead of Alex Barros and Sete Gibernau. Where's Valentino Rossi? He qualified in eighth position, but his team were caught tinkering with the racetrack to try and give him an advantage on the slippery grid. They were trying to put some rubber down with a scooter. He's been docked six seconds. He's at the back of the grid together with Max Biaggi, whose team were doing the same thing last night. They were caught by some other teams. Just keep your eyes on the back of these bikes if they're sneaking around for grip, Toby. They'll be looking for grip. Here we go! Carlos Checker gets a good start. Away from the grid goes Valentino Rossi. He's got four places already. Down to turn one we go. Shinya Nakano up on the inside. We're on board with Valentino Rossi. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We don't want a Mategi. Some people go wide. We're up behind. Oh, already behind Nicky Hayden. Valentino really rips through him. He's done half the field already. Checker leads this one from Sete Gibernau in second position with the Telefonica Honda. Third is Ruben Chaus. Eighth. He's up there in third position. Ninth, Valentino Rossi. I have him ninth on a quick count. He's going to do He's going to do an Australia here. He's going to go out and sock it to them. So then, we've got Checker in the lead of this one. We're on board of Valentino coming up behind and soon past. You've got to believe Lodge, Lodge Caparossi. We're up to... He just passed Nicky on that eight. corner. We're coming into the tight hairpin. Colin Edwards is behind Valentino Rossi already. The two Americans are side by side, but Rossi is ahead. And well, Edwards, I think Colin Edwards just got by Nicky as well, being a little bit too uh, too suave, too smooth, Nicky. He's got to be a little bit more aggressive. He lost two positions, just a couple corners there. Look and at Carl it. Carlos. It. Carlos is running. running away right now with this right here. But look at Rubens trying to hang on with it. Fellow countrymen said they do now. So then, we've got Shinya Nakano then up in third position. Fourth position, so it's Checker leading. Jibben out, Zaus. Nakano four, Bayliss fifth. Then we have got... That's Carlos Checker having a bit of a bobble. And, 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 and Gibbonau has and got Gibbonau him. Caught, you know, he caught up. Now let's take a look at this home straight for the first time. They're just getting through this triple right here. Two, four, six position. Seventh position. For now, Loris... Uh, Valentino, Valentino Rossi. Remind yourself, while well, looking at Carlos Checker, he's been the fastest Yamaha all weekend. This ain't a fluke that Carlos is at the front. It's going to be interesting down this long straightaway. This is this long right-hand corner leading on to it. Let's just hope our cameras oh, pick it Ducati up. Ducati out wide. Ducati, Ducati went a little bit wide there. This is what happens. You get off the line a little bit. The camera needs to go to the front. No, that's Troy Bayless that's being passed. Here we he go. Made... Here goes a Honda right past Carlos Checker going into turn one. Sete Gibbonau looking for the lead of this one. Gibbonau leads it. But here goes it into that's turn bad. one. This is Rossi. We're on board with Valentino Rossi coming up behind Colin Edwards. Edwards. So, as we complete lap one, Valentino Rossi has gone from 23rd position on the grid up to 8th position technically. Leading this Grand Prix is Sete Gibernau ahead of Carlos Checa. The two of them nearly a second ahead now of Chaus and then Nakano. And Biaggi only got up to 18th. Now, here's the pass for the lead. This is Gibernau on mirror signal manoeuvre. See that? The Honda he... outguns the, the Yamaha. You see how he moved into the, the dirty area and then moved right back over to that dark area because that's where where you can break the hardest. And this is where the Yamaha was working really good. We saw him open up the gap, but boy, Sete wants to be the man in control, and which he is right now. Valentino still trying to make moves on uh, Colin Edwards, but Colin Edwards holding his own. Colin, even though he started from 10th position, was looking good all weekend long. And he had a, a, a fortunate uh, misfortune with his uh, one bike, and then they had to get back on it and didn't quite get a good qualifying run with it. And uh, he's pulled away a little bit from Rossi through this section of the racetrack as he closes up on Barros. Yeah, Colin Edwards was on for pole on his fly last flying lap and had a big bobble and also a Kawasaki in the way. Now, in case you're wondering, Toby, no jump start. No jump start at all. So then, we are halfway around lap two. Whew, what a morning we have had. The rule book has been thumbed until it's worn out. Go oh, oh, there, again. Troy Bayliss. Again. Troy Bayliss onto the AstroTurf. He has lost position from ninth. We're on board, though, with the second position man. This is Carlos Checker, and we're looking at Sete leading. Jeremy up to 11th, but Williams in 11th ahead of Melandry, Hopkins, Arbay and Hodgson. Now, in the melee that we had at the beginning of this broadcast with explaining why Rossi and Biaggi were further down the order, we haven't explained that Shaky Burns not here. His wrist still injured. He's had an operation. What we haven't explained is that Jeremy is the only Aprilia. Shinya's going for third. Shinya's going for third and got third. 
We've also yet to explain that Gary McCoy is back in MotoGP, the last three races on the Aprilia. Colin Edwards, fastest man on the racetrack that last time, Toby. Unfortunately, I don't have the lap time in front of me. 159.7. 59.7. So, uh, Co uh, Colin, making moves. He's on his way up, get about ready to get by Ruben Chouse as his next victim. Shades of the superbike days. Yeah, uh, underlining what you said, Randy, Edwards was deeply, deeply impressive all through qualifying. Just that one flying lap went around. He looked aggressive all weekend long. This is part of the weekend, I guess, because it's Saturday. But look at how they're all bunched up there right now behind the Kawasaki. Look at how they're all bunched up there, and they cannot get by one another. Rossi moving up in the back of uh, Alex Barros there. That's Loris Caparossi. Now, I thought Loris might have been able to get him down that straight, but... Uh, Valentina was able to hold him off to go into turn one. These are our leaders. And it's Sati Gibanao from his fellow Spaniards, fellow Catalan, Carlos Checa, pulling away from the third place man. We shouldn't say the surprise third place man, should we, after Mateki, the Kawasaki of Shinya Nakano. We're on board with Sati Gibanao, the leader of this Grand Prix, looking back at Carlos Checa. Look how, look how that sun is beating down upon these riders. Quick Max report, he started dead last, let us not forget. He's only up to 16th position. Valentino is up to 7th position. You know, the other crazy thing is the other camel honda look at tomata he's way down as well down in 14th position behind hopkins and mcwilliams i mean this is last year's winner that dominated the i mean last race winner that dominated the race in motegi talking about camel honda just to finish off that string continuing and ever growing stronger rumors that max biaggi is going to be in repsol honda colors next Ch year charles just got past he just got knocked down another position and now we've got a long run let's see what the honda of uh, colin edwards can do as they he approaches is now look at Rossi Rossi's about ready to go by Charles as well Rossi's got Charles going into there as well we're on board oh he's hit Nicky Hayden Valentino's. he's hit Nicky Hayden he says sorry he says sorry to Nicky that was Barros he hit Barros it was Alex Barros who was the victim there, not Nicky Hayden. Sorry. It was a Repsol Honda. Oh, the big blow, big blow. No, 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 no. it's normal for oh, a cracker. It's, it's the, let's watch it. It is the smoke. This is the incident with Alex Barros. And he gets absolutely sideswiped by Valentino Rossi. And Boy, there'll be, there'll be a few words. This is one of those things you, you commit. That's a Kawasaki blowing up. Well, it's been doing this all weekend, guys. No, no, this is. Oh, that's a blow up now. That's not what. I hope he gets out of the way. Oh, look at the smoke screen. He doesn't know yet. And look at Colin. Look at look at Colin weaving back and forth, trying to get out of the way of it. He doesn't know. We're back to the leaders. Now, when we uh, had a blow up in free practice at Japan, Jeremy McWilliams went through the smoke screen. Goes. Put his head up. Oh, get that's the line there. Second engine blow up, Randy. Today, Shinyan lost an engine this morning. Oh, that's such a shame after Mategi, isn't it? It shows you what a difficult job it is. But that, of course, he held up the third and fourth, the fourth and fifth place men there. The two Spaniards have escaped even further now. Now, Shinya is very, very quiet, and uh, his, his demeanour is excellent all of the time. But even this morning in warm-up, he almost threw the bike away and gave it a kick. On you know, like behaviour. Randy. Just, just going back to the Rossi and Barros incident in turn one, it's, it, it goes to show you how good these guys are. Rossi bumps him, still has his knee on the ground, and waves to Barros as saying, listen, I'm sorry. I mean, that's how, how good these guys can be racing around here. Now, we've dropped a couple of guys there. Charles is now way... way Way back is now Valentino's closing up and trying to make a run with the fastest guy lap times wise Colin Edwards and that's third and fourth places Colin Edwards said they said they just set their fastest lap he becomes the fastest man on the track as well as the race leader. Sete Gibbonau leads from Carlos Checa. The pair of them four seconds ahead of Edwards and oh, Rossi. Poor Shinya, I you know, third place man last year, last week. And you could have said it was a Mirage type uh, vic, uh, uh, you know, podium finish, be finished because we had six riders go down that could have finished ahead of him. You, you can never tell. And now he was running in that third place fair and square with everybody upright. And unfortunately, another engine problem. Alex Barros back to 17th place. Is that a result of the nudge, or was there some damage to the bike in the collision? I wonder if he touched the brake. He might have bent the uh, brake lever, or look. Oh, oh, that, that Caparossi. goes Caparossi. Caparossi back off. Oh, that won't be the last now today. Back, now back on. Oh, those Caparossi now rejoining in seventh position. He's lost two places with that. Uh, to Zaus yeah, and Mark, Melandri. Marco Melandri just ahead of him. Look at the gap that Sete's opening up now. 
Check is running just a little bit wide here and there, and uh, Sete is just doing it piece by piece. He had eight tenths of a second. Carlos Checa did his best lap, that last lap at a 59.8, but Sete beat that by a 59.5, four, nearly four tenths of a second. So then, Rossi in fourth, but on a massive, massive grudge match. He is going to show them that he can get from last onto the podium. He is in fourth at the moment. He's right up the tailpipe of Colin Edwards' ease, Honda V5. Edwards riding out of his skin to try and get a podium full stop. Listen, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a big charge for him to try to get, look at, through this area of the racetrack, Colin opens up the gap. Right at the closing part of this, uh, Valentino closes that gap back up on the, on the braking area. But watch the Honda Power pull away from this Yamaha as they go down the straight. When you have a, a, a vision of it, look at it, look at the power. It's just slowly but surely pulling away, even though Valentino's trying to get that draft, trying to get that air being broken by Colin Edwards. And they're, they're slowly but surely closing the gap. We've got fastest lap of the race, 59.5 from Colin Edwards, uh, and Valentino chasing with a, a 59.6. Wow, Colin Edwards really hanging it out. So then, third and fourth position that we're looking at. Valentino Rossi is 5.1 seconds back of Sete Gibbonau there. The other person from the back of the grid, Max Biaggi, is down in 10th position. What a race we have yet to see here in Qatar. Tino Rossi out of the Qatar Grand Prix, just going wide, hitting the edge of the racetrack, hitting the AstroTurf and crashing out of this Qatari Grand Prix. He started from the back of the grid. He was riding one of the races of his life, only maybe behind Australia last year. He was up to fourth position, pushing to go to third. Fortunately, he's uninjured and perfectly OK. But Rossi is going to dot ball. And if Giuseppe Gibbonau wins this one with three races to go, the 14 points in it. Oh, and to bring it up to date with other contenders, Bayliss has pulled into the pit lane. Yeah, unfortunately, I ran the opposite way because I want to see if they put on set they board Rossi out or not. And one thing you should know that when Rossi was chasing Edwards on that lap, Edwards set the fastest okay. lap of the race that now, time round. Now, now Colin Edwards has got a cushion because he's going to see P3 plus 6 minus 2.5. That's his board. I'm going over to it. They've got lap 15, plus 2 point. They're going to put a, a, another number. Hold on a sec here. Okay, where are you? I'm in front of Sete's uh, right. thing. So there's plus 3 seconds. This is what Sete's going to read. Lap 15, plus 3.1. Cheka, uh, plus point. Nobuatsu out of the Grand Prix. Nobuatsu's crashed. So as Nobuatsu's crashed, Sete Gibbonau is going to see the pit board that says plus three odd seconds for Sete as he crosses the line. Here he comes past our commentary box. Sete, where is Carlos Checker? He is exactly 3.1 seconds and Edwards is right on him. Edwards is all over the back of him. Let's see the Edwards lap time. 159.3. Edwards another lap record. Edwards is less than a second back of Checker. This is now fourth position. First turn incident at Mategi came to a dead stop and then fought through to fourth place this time he got a big punt from Valentino Rossi dropped back to 17th at least and is now fighting back so okay. no easy life for Alex all right he's got uh, only uh out of here well, I don't know what this is trying to say here two plus three point four he's That's got a cap la, la, yeah I know but it's got a two plus three point four for who Randy for set <clears throat> Right, whilst we're watching this battle for third position, let's just concentrate on some other big stories in, in this commentary box this weekend. James Hayden is in 18th position. Now, points go down to 15th, where Tamada is. And now, that's the battle for Loris Caparossi. And that's Neil Hodgson who's in front of him. That's a battle for the 10th, 11th, 12th position. Uh, Jeremy is in... Let's get this right, 11th. Something's happening here, Toby. Oh, that's... Do you stay on that? Is that, is that Caparossi again? It was. Yes. Second was that, time. It almost looks like the replay. Yeah, that's the second like a, time. Yes. Second time for Loris Caparossi. There's the leader. We've got a lot going on. There's the leader. And there second place. Second. He's going to go to his teammate. No, not nope. quite. This is turn one. Look at the look at the lap time again. Breaking the lap record, Toby. Unbelievable. Colin Edwards putting those laps together. Mark, uh, Marco Melandri in fourth. Charles Hayden. Beyond seventh place. And then we're going to probably have Barros already taking up all those positions. Don't forget Barros all the way down to 17th place. 
third lap on the top that Colin Edwards has set a new lap record. And Colin Edwards has just done a lap time quicker than Valentino Rossi in qualifying yesterday with no fuel and sticky tyres. He is absolutely, well, he's on a magic carpet. Uh, the chatter's got away. It's a dead smooth service. It's not getting that bugbear of chatter that's done him all year. This is a good race right here, guys. Uh, this is this uh, left-hand corner that they're going to go to this next tighter right. Call is just uh, biding his time because that Honda should be able to outmotor the Yamaha if he gets an equal drive out of the corner. This is this flip flat flap. Let's see if Carlos Spikes moves around a little bit. Now they're pretty smooth through there. He's going to try to go up underneath him. Now this is very slippery. Oh. It's very slippery here, through here. And this is this long, never ending left hand corner that everybody likes. It just goes motoring through here. Look at Colin being able to just to close up that gap just slightly again. And he goes up underneath him. Wow, so that's confidence. Triple right. This is it. Triple right. Everybody likes this part of the racetrack. Also, this was the cleanest part of the racetrack. This is the double part of the apex. Now the triple part where it comes back on itself. Now we're getting to the area of the racetrack where we saw Valentino lose the back end off the racetrack. Colin did that in qualifying. I think you said somebody in the 125 race did that just off of that curb. Correct and they were lucky to get away with it. So then Colin Edwards up to second position to, well, not defend his teammate leading it, Sete Gibbonau, but out to race him and try and beat him. Remember this, Donington. This race ain't over yet. We've got 13 laps to go. Gibbonau breaks the timing beam, and there is the gap, and that in time for Colin Edwards is a gap of, come on timing screen, four seconds. Four seconds. Now Colin is going marginally quicker than Sete Gibbonau. And that is even including the overtake. So, Carlos Checker third, Melandri fourth, Chaus fifth, Hayden sixth, Biaggi in seventh position. Quick Brit update. We've got Jeremy McWilliams in 11th position as he crosses the, no, sorry, 12th position. Neil Horschen should be just up behind him. He's in 14th. Tamada in 15th. Yukio Kagiyama standing in for the injured Kenny Roberts Jr. He is in 16th position. James Ellison, 17th. James Hayden in 18th. Okay, Toby, I found out the sideboard, what, is, what they're giving him the signal of. It says lap 12, L, L12 at the top. Then you'll see a two plus 3.9. That means there's two riders plus 3.9 is what Val, uh, what Sete is ahead of him. And it says Colin Edwards and Cheka. Now they just uh, they took that back back off the number two because now they both know that Barrels, Edwards and Cheka are the guys that are following for second and third. So he's got that in his head that it's not Rossi for sure. Yes, you heard James Hayden's name mentioned just now by Toby. That's because he's replacing Curtis Roberts for this event on the Proton. Here's Marco Melandri, fourth position for Marco. He had a terrible afternoon yesterday, got caught up with a couple of slower riders when he was on his absolute best lap. He slithered down the order. Well, Marco Melandri may have been the Spider-Man at Portugal, but his leathers and everything up on eBay the other day. Leathers went for 1,600 quid, helmet for 1,700 quid, gloves for 480 quid. All proceeds going to charity. Yes, to an Italian uh, medical charity that works in combat zones. Great camera shot, this. Great camera shot. Love it. Set his front wheel flapping about there. Ruben Chaus in fifth. Top Ducati by a distance. That's like the beginning of the season, isn't it? When uh, the works team were in some disarray. 312 kilometers an hour down the home straight. That's approaching 195 miles an hour for Sete Gibbonau. Not quite exceeding 206 miles an hour that he did in qualifying. Gap comes down by a quarter of a second on that lap. Edwards took a quarter of a second and more out of Gibbonau. 159.7 to Gibbonau, 159.4 to Colin Edwards. Two minutes dead, 0.8 to Carlos Checa in Chaus third has got Melandri. Chaus has got Melandri. That's the battle for fourth position, Julian. But but now with Chaus getting back up into his stride, the lanky Catalan and multilingual number 11 Ducati rider. Well, he passed him once. Melandri had to go back, but uh, Chaus was on the inside. That's not going to work. Almost touching in. Sure, they actually did. Now, there's two tough guys at work. Former 250cc world champion, of course, is, Ma is Marco Melandri. And Ruben, when we first saw him, was on a 250. Took over from Alberto Pooch. Uh, from... Carlos Checker when Checker moved up to Pooch's 500. 95. 
So Sete Jimenez's lead has been trimmed slightly. This is the number last time when it was 3.73 seconds. That was the lead. That's the number to keep in mind as we go. What, we've got 11 and a bit laps to go. We we're almost exactly halfway in this race right now. So plenty to play out. Sete Jimenez, for him, it's a matter of concentration, of just racing the track. He won, what, last time out? Last time he's won three races ago in the Czech Republic. This has got to be the most difficult race that Sete that Gibbonau has got to do. He's got Rossi, oh, he's almost off the road. Rossi has crashed, and Gibbonau has got 25 points sitting in the palm of his hand, Randy. Yeah, they're doing a split times in the back there, Toby. I'll try to find out exactly where it's at, but he's getting a signboard 3.7 on, on to uh, Colin Edwards, but it'll be closer than that this lap. Take a look. Down through the right-hander comes Ruben Chaus. Now there's Max Biaggi, our first glimpse of Max Biaggi. He started uh, dead last on the grid, and he's now really motoring. He's in sixth position. Colin Edwards, the gap's down to 2.25. Colin Edwards is eating up the gap. Another red crash helmet with that lap, to uh, Tommy and Julian. He was, what, 159.2. Gibbonau was 2 minutes, 0.7. It was 3.7, it's now 2.2. That is an enormous difference for Colin Edwards to eat, to munch, to absolutely JCB barge his way into the lead of Sete Gibbonau. We've got a long way to go, as you said, we're only halfway. Now, some of you at home might be thinking, but they're teammates. Now Colin got... Edwards won't pass him. Yeah, I've got he... news for you. Yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> for his first Grand Prix victory, Run he, him ain't, over. he ain't looking at no pit board. He's looking at Sete and getting ready to line him up. And he's got plus 2.2 right now in the, in the splits in the back there. That was the uh, that was the gap over the start-finish line last time round. Carlos Checker, by the way, still in third place. And with Colin Edwards for... Oh, Neil Hodgson! Neil Hodgson retiring out of the race. Some sort of a problem with the bike. He's coasting down pit lane. He was going so, so well and unfortunately out of it. Now, I was going to say about Colin Edwards, about passing, uh, potentially passing Sete Gibbonau. Colin Edwards, probably not a Honda rider next year. Does he care? No. We're on board with Marco Melandri. We are in fifth position, looking forward at Ruben Chaus in fourth position. Marco may be taking a breather, but he won't be taking it for long. We're on lap 12 of 22. And one reason not to take a breather is called Max Biaggi, who is 3.8 seconds behind him and closing. Max in sixth place, having started dead last on the grid due to a penalty imposed on his team for doctoring his starting place on the grid overnight. Valentino Rossi suffered the same penalty for similar offence, but Valentino, the reigning champion, the championship leader, fell out of fourth place earlier on in this race. Fortunately, Valentino is uninjured. He looked very dazed and confused when he stood up. The visor ripped away from the sun and the moon. Crash helmet of number 46. Well, at the moment, and we haven't finished this Grand Prix, it's two crashes for Gibbonau this year, two for Valentino Rossi. But that means nothing. We've got a long way to go in this Grand Prix. There's the leader. And to think I said at the start of the year, you can't afford one crash if you're going to win this championship. I thought it was going to be a matter of consistency. But it's been more interesting than that. Now, 2.07, the lead of Gibbonau over Edwards last time round. So that's another, what, 0.18 of a second it's come down in the last lap. There is Neil Hodgson, St. Louis Stantine, it's chopping. I shouldn't think that's going to be the politest conversation in the world. Can't quite catch up what uh, the uh, 2003 World Superbike Champion is saying. Randy? Yes, I was inside the, uh, the garage and they, uh, Neil said that there was some sort of oil. He didn't really want to talk. But he said there was some sort of oil coming onto his leg uh, and his foot slipping off of the right foot peg. They just closed the door and they were pulling the fairing off, but nothing we can do about that. That's a shame for Neil Hodgson. Here are the leaders. Let's have a quick uh, look back at what else is happening. Jeremy McWilliams in 12th position, ahead of then Yuko Kegiyama, looking to score a point on his MotoGP debut. He's ridden Suzuki two-stroke 500s before. But he is in 15th position. James Ellison, just 7.4 seconds off a points scoring finish. And likewise, James Hayden, who's right on Jeremy on the floor, I'm Jeremy afraid. Jeremy Williams. Yes, there's a the lone Aprilia out on the dirt. James Ellison, now a point scorer for WCM. 
Only one Aprilia here, of course, because shaky burn. Hope you're all right, mate. Major operation on his left wrist a couple of days ago. Here are the two Repsol Hondas, Barros and Hayden together. Now, Alex Barros with the number four Repsol Honda being touched unintentionally by Valentino Rossi. It was, that was a mistake. Uh, yeah, yeah, raised his hand. As I said, Valley, Valley does that with his knee on the ground and goes, sorry, you know, most, most people wouldn't even think about moving their hands off the handlebars, but this is where these guys sit. And you have to imagine the stomach muscles, everything it takes to take your hand off to hold yourself in a position when the bike's going through the corner like that. The lead down to under two seconds. It's 1.94 seconds. One, point, one minute 59.57 to Gibbonau, one minute 59.44 to Edwards last time round. This is the battle that we're looking at. This is sixth and seventh position between the two Repsol Hondas. Max Biaggi's ahead of them in fifth. Melandri's missing. Melandri, I was just about to say, Melandri's gone missing. And that is why. Oh, my goodness me. So Max Biaggi's up to fifth. And he's inherited that fifth position from Marco Melandri, who's gone into the gravel. Goodness me. James Hayden point scorer Pray, James Hayden point scorer <laughs> good for Proton because his teammate Nobu Aoki has already been on the floor and there's the uh, Alex Barros what another another comeback from the absolutely terrible luck I'll listen to hear what he's got to say about Valentino Rossi afterwards when Valentino was coming through that was it so then, Yuichi Ui didn't quite qualify on the WCM, mortified and embarrassed that he didn't do so, he didn't start. Shinya Nakano blew his engine up, Troy Bayliss uh, retired, Valentino crashed and out of the race, Nobuatsu Aoki out of the race, Neil Hodgson oil problem and Jeremy Williams just crashed, uh, Marco Melandri out of the race as well. They are falling like flies, they are withering in the sun. And the gap is now... The Colin Edwards' transponder is taking its time to... 1.7, so down by another couple of tenths, Toby, it's this time round. It's because Colin's transponder doesn't exist, I don't think. Uh, Juan Martinez, the crew chief to uh, to set, they said they can't even get a split time in the back section because it won't register. So I have a feeling it might be doing something with manual when it comes across the line. That's why it doesn't reflect it right across, as soon as it goes across. That's exactly right, Randy. It could have just fallen off. It could have just shaken itself off as we see Barros ahead of Hayden. That That's a racing incident. It's obviously not by design that the thing is supposed to fall off. Sometimes that happens, and what they do is that they work out when they break the timing beam. Beam, they, they can work it out that, oh, there's a motorcycle. The, 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 the electronic wire in the tarmac can see that there's a bike gone across, and they just take some... Cabarossi out of the Lawrence. race! Cabarossi out of the race from 13th position. No Marlborough Ducatis finishing here today. Disaster for the Marlborough Ducati team. Ruben Chouse in fourth place. It's going to be touching wood on Ruben's behalf. The only finisher on out of the four Ducatis. Now, that was a good visual check on the gap between the Lili Setejibadao and Colin Edwards chasing him in second place. Yeah. The, the guy who has the advantage here, just a little bit, of course, is Colin, being able to uh, just make close those gaps here and there. But Seth knows how to win Grand Prix. He's been here before. He's been pressured by people like Valentino. He's been pressured by a double world champion, but it's been in the super bright class. I think he'll end up being, catching up to him. The, the last time, though, it was 159.6 versus the 159.4, about 1.15 of a second quicker. As we take a look at Ruben Charles, who's running in fourth place. What a good job he's been doing all weekend as well. What a spectacular job, yes. As uh, Julian said at the top of the programme, provisional pole sitter was Ruben Chouse, equaling then his best ever qualifying this season. He ended up in seventh position after yesterday. And now with only 14 runners in this Grand Prix, WCM and Peter Clifford are in 13th with James Ellison. James Hayden is in 14th position. Here we go for and a pass. A Here we go for a pass, Toby. His on board shot. Max Biaggi's bike all weekend long has been doing 332. I think you said that was 205 miles an hour. Let's see if he can hold it up all the way down. He can. And Barros cannot close the gap. We know what sort of a demon breaker Barros is. Uh, we've seen it for... How many Grand Prix has he done? 205 or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, Ruben Chouse showing you his raw talent on a track that nobody's got data for. If somebody takes that lad and uh, a, a Burgess figure and makes him work and think about it more, here we go. talent. Here we go this time, Randy. No, this is too dangerous of an area, uh, or too, too difficult of an area. Uh, 
to, to pass. There's no groove. But take a look at Barros' bike that we're on board. Watch the back tire spin a little bit. You'll see it slide, and then that lets Max just creep a little bit away from him. They've got to keep it into the area where there's traction control. Now, this is a very difficult area because you've got three Hondas that kind of react very similar. But we've got two different types, maybe three different types. There's Barrels going around the outside. Now he's going to try to bring it back. This is the flip-flop. And he might try to outbreak him for this next hairpin. Here we go, little short corner. He try, tries to run it out, but there's no room there. He's got to follow him that whole complete lap. This is this really fun corner, this long, never-ending left-hander on board. There's a chance. This is where Colin Edwards got Carlos Checa. This is where he did it, but he can't do it to Max. Now, Max's style is a 250 style. We've known that for many years. So he likes to use the front end of the bike. He likes to let it run on into the corner. So corner speed is very, very difficult. If you're someone like Barris who likes to spin it up and drive it out of the corner and try to get a little bit more speed midway down these short straightaways. This is this penultimate corner. This is where Rossi lost the back end right there and uh, getting ready to run down this straight as soon as they exit this one, Toe. Now, Randy, the gap has gone up for the past two laps at the front. It went from 1.7 on lap 14 to 1.8 on lap 15, and Seti now has 2.1 seconds over Gibbon. With six laps to go, and here goes a, a maneuver. He, cannot, he can't do it. Look, Max's bike just eats them, guys. Eats the Repsol bike going down that straight. That camel bike is a bit quicker, and it has been through the speed tracks the whole time. Well, it's a camel going quick in the desert. I had to get that one in as well, didn't I? <laughs> Sete Jibber now, though, is on a real ship of the desert. He leads this race with six laps to go, and his lead is growing. This is the battle between Max Biaggi fifth and Alex Barros fifth at sixth. Barros barging through past Max Biaggi. Take some of that, amigo. Not as he barges through. Well, the Brazilian bullet going past the Roman Emperor. Two great rides from Alex Barros in two Grand Prix from disastrous starts, not of his own making. Talk about when you when you luck's out, you luck's out. Yeah. But but Barros has shown at Mategi and here reminded us just what a talent he is. Now there were the two leaders. Yeah, Colin just looks like he closed up the gap again. Said they were spinning the tire quite a lot as we were taking a look at that uh, incident with Barros and getting up underneath Max Biaggi. There as we take a look at Carlos Teca. We haven't seen much of him around. He's been so lonely in third place. Yes. Uh, you know, Carlos has done a, a very good job all weekend long as well. Uh, somewhere along the line, the Honda pace got even better. Colin always seemed on the pace uh, from from the from right at the beginning, as well as Ruben Chalsey. Uh, both these guys, of course, being excellent uh, superbike racers coming over, over to MotoGP, and, of course, Colin having those two world titles. Certainly true. Well, Seta Jibba now, that lead come. of just over two take, seconds take ahead of Colin Edwards. Gap. Take a look at this gap when they cross the line, Tobe. Yeah, well, 2.06 it was, but that was 3.3 miles ago. Let's have a look. Let's just wait a moment for the computer to chug in. 1.65 seconds, and we have got four more laps to go here in the desert. Can Seta Jibba now have the best result possible this weekend, which is to win the race, and Rossi have zero. He's got four more laps to go. Colin Edwards, his teammate in second place, he doesn't care about team orders. He's probably not a Honda rider next year. Remind us of the gap at the top of the championship before this race. It's 39 points difference between Valentino Rossi leading and Jibba now in second. If you take 25 away from that, the gap going into the last three races will be just 14 points. And everything's open for grabs in the last three races. Just take a look at the backs of these bikes. Here. Colin trying to make up that gap and spinning the tire through that section of corners. He's got to try to close the gap. But Seth is not, you know doing anything slow whatsoever he's kept it in the 59s he may, might have made a bit of a bobble that put him in the 59.8 which was nearly three or four tenths seconds of a tenth of a second slower than his last previous lap but he's running very very smooth lap times right now the Bridgestone runners not having a nice time. John Hopkins, the first of them in ninth place, but a small matter of 42 seconds behind that man. Okay, this, the first two guys, we know the, uh, the the gap between them, 1.6 that they, they cross. Then there's an eight second gap from Cheka uh, over, over, uh, over Colin Edwards. And then we go to Chouse, it's only three, three seconds now from Chouse to Barrows. Barrow's trying to make a gap, close that gap up as they get ready to go another lap. 
Yeah, you've got to believe that Barros is going to get choused. There are our two leaders. Well, Sete Gibernau coming off one of the worst Grand Prix in his recent career. Last time out in Japan. He's leading this Grand Prix. Keep your head down, Sete Gibernau. This could be win number four of our 13 race season so far. 16 he races. Pace. He picked up the pace, 59.4, nearly four tenths. He took three tenths out of his lap time, 1.9 seconds now. Seth is just playing with him. He's just got it in, in check. Yeah, we've got three more laps to go. Just a smidge under 10 miles of racing to go. Gibernau leading from Colin Edwards, from Carlos Checa, Spaniard, American Spaniard, and then Ruben Chaus in fourth position, only just now crossing the line. Barros is all over the back of him, like a magic carpet, Two, like a bivouac. 2.45 seconds, Barros to Zaus. That is... A, uh, he ain't giving up either. Let's see the lap time. You're not Ruben, wrong. Ruben Chaus, 2 minutes, 0.5. Barros, 59.8. Alex Bowers on a mission after getting an unmerciful punt from Valentino Rossi at turn one. Coming back from, well, he was 18th over the start-finish line, so he probably got pushed back even further than that. And the thing about being punted, Randy, is that it's not just the fact that you lose time, you lose your rhythm. Oh, Checker! <laughs> Checker's out of the Grand Prix! Zaus for a rostrum! Podium! Chaus for a rostrum and Checker's thing has gone pop because there goes Barros, so Chaus has gone through! Oh my goodness me, what a disaster! And that's a mechanical, that is a mechanical. There's, o there's only one yam left in the race. And Norik Arbe. Norik Arbe in eighth place. Oh, he's now seventh, thank you. Good point. <laughs> Chaus on the podium. I should have put my money down when we discussed it in the hard car, Julian. Or, just not that far behind Chaus, Alex Barros. If Barros could get on the rostrum after what happened to him, double hero. <laughs> so then, Alex Barros is about to have a pit board that is surely going to tell him that he is now oh, look up at this. to fourth. Look at the bike snapping around. Now he's got this in check as well. The only one that can take it away from him is Rubens himself because there's no way that, that Barros can make up that time with Chaus riding it that hard. As Seth gets ready to cross the line, he's got two laps to go, Toby. To take this 25 points, take his 14 points out of the championship. Oh, yes, that'll be a gap of 14 points. He's extended the lead a little bit over Colin Edwards. We've, it's now two seconds. We've talked so much. Is it a Honda track? Is it a Yamaha track? Is it any other track? I believe the next week it has been dominated by Honda in, in Malaysia. It'll be very, very interesting, of course, with this championship battle. Well, there goes Chaus over the line. He's up to third position. There's the neutral Ducati engine technician who looks after the engines in that Dantine garage. He's up to third now. Barros fourth. Yeah, Barros only took two tenths of a second out. There's the gap. Look at it. Just a lap and a, not even a quarter. Well, after all the rumours about quarters, the, the Dantine team being given ultimatums by various suppliers over the weekend, what a, about um, bills not being paid? What a response. Could you ask for more from your employee, Ruben Jowes? Yeah. And the bike, the bike sponsored by this circuit, Randy. Yes, not to mention... This is Ducati's first podium this season, and it's not the factory. Oh, blimey! Yes, missed that one. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, the Luis Dantin won't have missed that one. Yeah, nor Alan Jenkins sitting at home watching this. Woo, <sighs> dear, oh, dear. Well, it's the world turned upside down. It is. We did say, uh, probably started by yourself, Julian, we're going to get a freak podium person. The f train of thought set off by Randy de Pornier's comments yesterday to us. Well, you look at last week's podium as well. We had a Kawasaki. This week we've got a uh, satellite team Ducati. Wow. Sete Gibernau leading this Grand Prix. He's got 25 points just over a lap away from him. You think there's going to be good celebrations between uh, Colin Edwards and Rubens on that podium? <laughs> <laughs> Fausto Grassini is going to cool. fall over. That's going to look pretty cool. Fausto Grassini must be having apoplexy in the back of that garage. Lap one, 1.9, Edwards. That is it. One more lap to go for Sete Gibernau. The gap between himself and his teammate Colin Edwards is 1.57 seconds. It's reduced just a little bit. Half a second last time round. But it's going to be a very, very steep dune to climb for Colin Edwards to get Sete Gibernau. Here's third place man Ruben Chaus. All his Christmases coming at once. Come on, my boy. <laughs> you wait for Ruben's comments after the end. <laughs> that is going to be entertainment. Oh. Carlos Checker's just come up pit lane. Poor bloke. Fastest jammo all weekend.
pole position. Looks set for a rostrum at the very least. And then the thing conks on him. Let us not forget that James Hayden's going to score some points together with James Allison, together with Yukio Kagiyama. First time on a MotoGP bike, first time on Bridgestone. That's all the British then. Yuki, Yukio Kagiyama, well-known British rider. Yes. We love him. <laughs> <laughs> but the weekend, as you said, Toby, has gone as well as could possibly be imagined for Sete Jiba now. He looked, the title chance looked dead and gone, but he's... But Valentino Rossi, no points, and it looks like it's going to be 25 to Sete. I'll, I'll say exactly what Randy said to me whilst we were having lunch in Mategi a couple of weeks ago. What happened to the... Max has been in the gravel! Max has been in the gravel from fifth position. You've got to believe that he's lost time to Nicky Hayden. Nicky Hayden has got to be up a position. Randy, you said to me at Mategi, whatever happened to our championship? Well, now it's back. Back in just a flash, wasn't it? What a great weekend for Telefonica. And he takes a quick look, suddenly sneaks a look over his shoulder. It's the first time I've seen him do that all season. Valentino Rossi started from the back of the grid. His team were caught tinkering with the tarmac overnight to try and aid Valentino Rossi to leave the grid. They got caught. Rossi got put to the back. He got up to fourth. Let's give him some credit there. But he fell. Gibernau was second or first. He crossed the line. Gibernau wins in Qatar. His fourth victory of the season on the championship back towards a little bit more towards Gibernau but Rossi still has the advantage but Gibernau has got a glimmer in fact it's a sparkle what a weekend for Team Grissini what a weekend for the damn Team Ducati team this is going to be third place for a customer Ducati what a weekend for us commentators for this <laughs> championship. Colin Edwards gets second position, his second MotoGP podium, and here comes Ruben Chaus, his debut podium in MotoGP in his rookie season. Where are the rest, he looks around and asks. And that is Ducati's first podium of the season. Barros gets fourth, and Nicky Hayden does get fifth position. Because